Commence the Qantas desensitization. Well, we've actually commenced it already, but today I'm going to do another session. So Qantas, as you may know, um, wasn't very well behaved for his first endurance ride and didn't even get to start because he was very scared of the gazebo. The venue was very hyped up, lost his head and wasn't very easy to handle. So my kind of winter goals with him are to desensitize him get him to listen take him to more open busy spaces because there aren't that many around here and it's something that i've kind of omitted from his training he's been to lots of busy spaces but all quite enclosed not big views and, and open and windy so let me show you we've got the flag chair and i have also made out of a hiking stick and a bit of banner from a ride my own little flag to see if he'll progress to a big flag but we'll start with a little one so a couple of these i've done already the flags are new then we've got the bailey's walkover nice and crunchy he's done that before and there i've got two poles that's the stop and stand area and then there is Hedgehog Avenue, so he's got to walk nicely between the fence and the hedgehogs without rushing. For some reason, doesn't like them very much. But I have a very exciting new element. So the concrete cows ride that we were meant to do has, it's kind of famous for its random things on course. And I love my aunt for this because she sent me a letter with a parcel in the post. Let me read it to you. Dear Dan and Beth, after hearing about Qantas's naughty behaviour at the Milton Keynes ride, I, th I thought I should make a contribution to his training. Thank you, Lizzie. Taking into consideration his adversity to cows and dinosaurs, <laughs> the former, I imagine he'll come across on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, he does. I thought I'd go with the latter. Enclosed are some training aids, which I hope will be effective. Maybe place them in stable or field. I hope they work with lots of love, Liz. And what she got was some inflatable dinosaur toys. Um, so we're going to pump them up now and we're going to have the dinosaur slalom as our fifth element to his training. I've got a... Uh, I don't even know what these dinosaurs are. T-Rex, that's an easy one. I bet there are like, three-year-old boys. Um, oh, I know this one. No, I don't. Stegosaurus? Mm, who knows? Okay. Oh, it comes with two pumps. Do you know what I should have got? One of those suits that you can wear, like dinosaurs over the top. Okay, that's in. Dinosaur number one. <laughs> So maybe the dinosaur enthusiasts can help me out. I've pumped them up. I did actually break one of the pumps, so good job that there were two. Um, got a T-Rex, undisclosed. I think a Triceratops. So here we have it, the, the dinosaur slalom.
dinosaur number one. <laughs> what about this one? This is it No, that's a tall one, isn't it? How would you know anyway? And what I think is a triceratops. Pontus? Triceratops? Pretty friendly with the dinosaurs. Okay, on to the halt. Come on. I mean, you go over poles all the time, Cuboid. Come on. Of all the things I've put out, this is the one you are most wary of. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Over here. Good boy. And around the dinosaurs. Good lad. Good lad. My little dinosaur. You don't really care about them, do you? Okay, into the stand. And stand, good boy, stand. And back, back, back. Good boy, back, back, back. Walk on. Stand. Okay, into the Hedgehog Avenue. Good boy. Good boy, I'm all. Good boy. Good lad, hey? Well done, see? It's not so bad, is it? Good boy. Good boy. Quantus. Quantus. I mean, it was too good to be true, wasn't it? Come on. <laughs> Stand. Back. Back. Oh, no. This bit we need to work on. This way. Good boy. This way. This way. Quintus. Always distracted by the fence. Quintus. Quintus. Come on. Cuboid. You're the strangest animal. Cuboid, come on. Oh well, at least he's inquisitive. First part was good though, and he's off. <laughs> Someone bored of this now. Huh? <laughs> You're doing really well. Oh, we've got an itch. Just uh, pausing training. I've got an itchy leg. You ready? Let's go then. Here they come. Stand. Can we do back? Back. Back. 
Good boy. No, that's all right. That's okay. That's enough. Good boy. Walk on. Good lad. Walk on. This way. Go on. Do it without getting distracted. All the way. This way. Is that I'm done now, Mum. I'm going to go back to the start. <laughs> Bye, Q. I'm so proud of him. He's literally gone from being scared of stuff to obsessed with stuff. If you pick that up, you'll scare yourself. Like, I'm not holding him with a lead rope or anything and waving the flag and he's still staying with me. I'm sure all the Pirelli and the Trek people will be screaming at me, um, but I've never done any of this kind of stuff before, apart from kind of training youngsters. I've never done it like officially where you do Pirelli training or the Trek classes or anything. So if anyone has any pointers, that would be awesome. Always open to new ideas and better ways of doing things. But I couldn't be prouder of him. He's actually been really good. In fact, he doesn't even really care anymore. <laughs> I have a top tip to share. And it's a tip I've only discovered this year. Where I've been, I don't really know. Um, so I've been using the NAF Mud Off spray on their legs when they go out every three days. And although there is mud on it now, I mean, nothing's gonna stop mud going on. It's clay here, so normally it really, really sticks and it's quite hard to get off and I have to like brush the mud off. Literally just falls off like it's sandy mud. Um, I thought that spray was gonna be a gimmick, but actually it's probably saved me loads of time, loads of water. Um, and it's actually really good to get them used to being sprayed and that kind of noise and stuff as well. It's like an extra thing that they'll be good at. I've heard though that the um, is it Golden Label? Pig oil and sulphur does exactly the same thing for way, way less, but... <laughs> it would take quite a lot to get this mud off. I've not even got the hose on full power. And it literally just slides off. I know, amazing. Today is a little bit more desensitisation training. That's kind of my main focus with Qantas at the moment. Is throwing lots of new things at him, not literally throwing things at him, um, and seeing how he copes and trying to get him to chill out about life a little bit. Good boy. Right, let's have one last listen of the dino. Good boy. And then the dino will transform. This is my dinosaur costume from Amazon, because I was bored, so I bought one. Oh my god, I can't. Look at your straight face. Your head's pop up. Yeah. Oh, here it goes. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> oh. Is he a legend? We tried with the small one. Wait, that 
if what you want to. How long was that? 30 minutes? 30 minutes to chill? Good. Good boy. So as training goes, that wasn't too bad. The whole point is, I know it looks like it's, it's stressful and it's mean to kind of stress him out and that he's scared. But for those kind of minutes of being scared in the future will do him well and he's less likely to um, panic and things when he's out and about and when they're panicked they're most likely to hurt themselves so although Joe doesn't like it very much it's all about doing it in a way that we get nice positive reactions in the end and we did um, walk past the dinosaur really well a few times I wanted to get to the stage where the dinosaur can like literally walk around school and we can do what we're doing and he won't even pay any attention. What was really funny though is once Izzy took the dinosaur head off and walked up, still wearing the costume so it's still rustling and the tail was still moving about, he literally had his whole face in it like sniffing it and things so we're getting there okay we're getting there.